Over 100 million people watch Nollywood movies every single day. The question is, what are they watching and what are they learning from it? If this is your first time joining this channel, we're all about Nollywood movies that have a positive, impactful message that they have to deliver. So what we do on a daily, in case you have not watched any of our videos, we saw through all the Nollywood movies that get released on YouTube every single day. And we look for the ones that have a positive message to deliver the ones that have a lesson that they teach our young generation considering the fact that over 100 million people watch nollywood movies every single day we would love to hold our producers to higher standards what does this mean we no longer want them to just make movies we want them to make movies that are both entertaining and have a lesson that it teaches. So on a daily, we saw through all the movies and deliver the ones that we feel have the best message for the day. Now, that being said, we've decided to integrate something new. Why a lot of Nollywood movies have a message to deliver? Some of them are not as beautiful. We want our children to be able to watch a Nollywood movie without wondering are they going to be learning something bad from it? In order to recognize the producers that are doing a great job in delivering movies that have a beautiful lesson to teach, we decided to nominate 10 beautiful movies every single month. Movies that have a beautiful message. Movies that teach the younger generation something to learn. We're looking to recognize all the producers that have something impactful to deliver in every single movie that they produce. So without any further waste of time, we're gonna go ahead and start with this presentation. Now, before we start, here's how it works. We will be picking movies that we are posted in the current months that we are looking at. So a movie might have been produced in November, but uploaded to YouTube in January. In that case, we would consider it a January production. I hope this is clear. So some movies that you guys would see were part of this because they were uploaded to YouTube. In this case, is January 2024. Of the 10 movies that we nominate, we're going to talk about each one of them, why they were nominated, what value we think that they bring to the society, and then at the end, we will let the masses choose on which one delivers the best and most beautiful message. So let's get started with this. Number one is the standby lover. Let's please watch. Come here. Oh. Same here. I'll call you, okay? Mm-hmm. Tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Take care, babe. Of course, I will. Don't fall. I know. I'll call you. <laughs> okay. Drive safely. Of course. <laughs> Bye. But please answer me just this one question. When you were outside, what were the both of you doing hugging each other? Wait. Hold on a minute. You followed me outside. Um. I... Like you were creeping. Behind me, outside. No, no, no. I, I didn't mean to. I was just, I was just doing some chores in the compound. David, do you realize that you're a sick man? Yes, I know. 
My God. What is, what is all this? Huh? I'm sorry. You followed me like a little rat outside to see what I was doing? I'm so sorry. You know, this is the height. No, this is... No, no, Emilia. I am done. No, please. All right? Emilia. Do you hear me? Please. I am done with this relationship. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you, do you get what I'm saying? I said this relationship is done. I mean, Debbie, please. I am done. Please, don't, don't, what the hell? don't be offended. I'm... Behind me, look at look, 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 look. What? What? I mean, like a rat. I mean, I'm sorry. Cool. So the standby love, as you can see, has to do with relationship, respect, and gaslighting. One of the biggest problems that we have as a society is being in a toxic relationship. As parents, we look forward to our kids to marry and be happy in their marriage. With the new invention of the internet and all these social media platforms, it's becoming harder and harder for couples to focus on their marriage without outside influence. So what happens is, if it's not something that they saw on the social media, it's something that they saw on TV, it's one thing or another would always distract and cause people to misbehave. In this particular case, we can see that there was a lot of mistrust. There was a lot of disrespect. There was a lot of gaslighting where the partner is trying to address a problem, but the other person is escalating it for reasons that are best known to them. All these things hurt a relationship. And at the end of the day, we don't want to waste time to see our kids get married only for them to break up a few years later. These are supposed to be forever. Back then, the, there was nothing like divorce. Now, divorce could only be tolerated at extreme circumstances. But what we don't want is for the younger generation to turn marriage into a venture where let's just jump in. If it's not good, we'll just jump right back out. Because it's not even cheap to get married anymore these days. You know, expenses are off the roof. But at the same time, there's nothing as bad as putting all your energy into a relationship only for your partner to start misbehaving. This number one nomination addresses all these relationship concerns as it pertains to toxicness in relationships, as it pertains to disrespect, as it pertains to gaslighting, and all the things that surround these topics. So number one nomination addresses toxic relationships, if we can say it that way, and why it should be avoided in any union. Our second nomination is through colors. Let's go ahead and watch and then come back and discuss it. Um, the cafe opens by 9 a.m. and the bar 10 a.m. Oh, I see you're, you're new. I'm sorry? I mean, you're new, so you obviously don't know who I am. With all due respect, sir, it doesn't matter who you are, we will not open the cafe or the bar because you asked us to open early. No, we won't do that. Hey, what are you doing? Go yeah. Hey. I thought you were out of the country. Yes, I was. I came in last night. Of course. So, Tony, this is Dominic Da Silva. He's one of our partners and investors at the Black Bay Cafe. Uh, He's the reason your job exists. Uh -huh. I kept telling her she couldn't do everything on her own. Nice to meet you, Miss Tony. Back boy, sir. Uh, you've been avoiding eye contact with me since I got here. Is everything all right? No, I haven't. I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize. I just want to be sure that you and I are fine. We are. We, we, we're fine. Thanks. What if I got Amanda to give you a layout? Um, Relax. So I'm not going to kidnap you. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. Unless you really want it. How long have you two been together? Two years. Two years and he's already speaking to you that way. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I am not your wife, sir. I know, I'm just saying that uh, good things deserve to be treated exactly as they deserve. Uh, don't you think so? You're special. Sorry. Um, can I can, can I get down, please? It's okay here, guys. Okay? All right. So the reason why we pick two colors is because this is a real life thing. A lot of men refuse to allow their wives to walk because of that one fact. They feel like there's a lot of scavengers out there that are looking for women or vulnerable ladies that they can take advantage of. Where does this happen? It usually happens at work. So as you can see in this movie, the boss is now knowing very well that the lady is married. He's still luring her to bed. Sad enough, she fell for it. And not just did she fall for it, the movie also showed the consequences that came out of the whole saga. You see, when you're working for somebody and you run into a situation where they are now trying to take advantage of the fact that you are working for them, one of the things we believe you should always do is address the concern with a high authority at the office. If a high authority doesn't exist or cannot address the situation, it's on you to bring it back home. Your spouse is supposed to be your everything, your gist body, your gossip partner, your everything. So it's always a good idea to bring this at home and address the situation at home. Maybe he will give you some tips or insights on how to proceed. Maybe it's a question of just addressing it with the boss in a nice way. Whatever the case may be, Keeping it to yourself or allowing the pressure to continue never ends well. It's either you let us succumb or, you know, it gets to a situation where you have to lose your job. So, ladies, gentlemen, if either partner has a situation where the boss at work is trying to take advantage of an employee, please... Don't keep quiet. Take it up to HR. Take it up to any other senior member or colleague and see how these things can be resolved without it escalating. So Two Colors did a good job in presenting the situation, presenting the problem and addressing the consequences and what could be done. Number three is love and charm. What the hell is this person not picking? Hello? Hello? Who's this? Can you please come and open the gate? Why would you be calling by this? Who's this? Sorry, um... Who am I talking to? Can you imagine? Will you come and get the gate? This is my house, my friend. Who are you? Jesus Christ. Good evening. Good, um, good day, good afternoon, good morning. Good you. day, sir. What's this? Animal, place, or thing? What are you? Oh, no, no, no. Shut up! I'm not done talking. Now, you see, this is my problem with people in your generation. You think this is the village era where you can just walk from compound to compound greeting everybody? And then when you see a fine girl, you tell her, go tell your father, I'm coming to pick a flower in your compound. No! This is the 21st century. Mister, so the next time you want to walk up to a Gen Z buddy, you better be sure you're on my level or even higher. And by the look of things, <laughs> you're definitely not even being to me. Now take your meat with some other girl. Get out. I know you. I, I don't know you, sir. No, 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 no. I, no. I met you at the store. No, sir. My, my, my dad said Kalista. No, sir. I'm Ogechi. Ogechi, sir. Who 
are you talking about? I know you. Sir, you don't know me now. I know myself. You, but you call me sir. Yes, sir. Yes. But you work for me. Yes, sir. But you work in this house. Yes, sir. Oh, that's my house. Y yes, sir. Your house, sir. Ah! It's about to be a movie. No, sir. Get my back. I met on your fake level. So what I was trying to do, all those packaging and how I was dressed was so that I could attract a rich man that would transform my life and take care of me. And you were dressed like a poor man. Put yourself in my shoes. If if you were in my shoes, will, will you follow yourself? You have no shame. Uh, love and shame definitely brought us to one thing that's a big epidemic in Nigeria. Fake life. Fake life as good as it looks like it is when it's being viewed on the social media is bad. Fake life is bad for a lot of reasons. The biggest of the reasons is that it sets the person that is faking back. How? If you may ask. First of all, fake life does one thing. It forces you to continuously engage in things or buy or purchase items that are way above your budget, that are way above your affordability. And the problem here is that when somebody is living a fake life, they don't realize that they are exhausting all their resources in things that are not actually improving them but things that are just showcasing them to look bigger than they are. If I may explain further, when you enter a market, somebody that's living a fake life might go and buy a 1 million Naira Gucci bag. It might be a real bag, but this 1 million that was spent on the bag just so that they can show it off on the social media platforms is a one million that could have been used to better their life. Maybe it's one million that could be put in some sort of investment, one million that could be used to do, you know, purchase some inventory, or whatever the case may be. But this one million has been squandered in buying a bag that offers nothing to that person's life. Another situation is where they rent things and then show it off as their own. What happens with this again is that they waste all these resources in renting things that are useless to their personal growth. Now, when you waste your resources in such things, those resources are no longer available for you to use to better yourself. This movie did a good job in showing us how the fake life that the lady was living, how it turned around and affected her, what happened, how it happened, and at the end of the day, it even taught her a few lessons here and there. Number four nomination is Wife of the Prophets. Where is the man I married? Where is the man filled with the Holy Spirit? Where is the man close to God? Where is that man that walked me down the aisle? That innocence, that simplicity, where is he? So where is this drama coming from? For information, I'm still the man you got married to. I have not changed and I will not change. That's why I don't like to do business with people that talk too much. Did you say person where we are, where they okay like this? Did you say it easy for the person? Come begin to act like cripple. Did you say it okay? It's... Are you the only one that acted cripple? Listen to me. What I will pay you is 50,000 Naira. That's what I will pay you. And if I give you that money, I don't want to see you anywhere close to any of our ministries. You know, complete that my money. 100,000. I go tell the whole world how the prophet, how that prophet, that fake prophet, take the blueprint, fake, fake miracle with us. You must complete my money. 100,000. <laughs> this Nikonpo, this useless woman, close 
down her shop. The shop I opened with my hard earned money. Closed down her bank account and the proceeds she took to one useless profit. I think that is not enough. Last week, last week I came back from the office just to discover that all the television sets in my house were gone. When I asked her, she told me that she donated it to that useless church. I was so pissed that I have to stay outside two good days. Afterwards, I forgave her. Do you know that the worst happened this afternoon? I came back this afternoon just for this idiot to tell me that she's given her only car as a seat to that same prophet. Now, I know this has to do with the ministry, pastors, and, um, you know, congregations and uh, whatnot. Now, we tend to want to leave pastors alone. But the problem is that there are so many new churches that are popping up left and right. New evangelists, new pastors, you know, and what happens is these people now become the pillar of their societies, wherever they may be. When somebody is asking God for something, they usually don't just sit in their house and pray, which is what I believe should be done. You sit, you pray to your God. But what happens is a lot of people tend to start looking for prayer warriors that would help them to pray. Now, many of these prayer warriors are not clean. They are not straightforward. They, are, they involve themselves in all sorts of things. So the masses outside, you don't see that. What you see is a ministry that's doing well, maybe with a lot of cars, maybe with a lot of congregation, and they tend to equate it to the pastor being a true man of God. It doesn't always translate. There are true men of God there are true men of God indeed, but the majority of people that are out showcasing themselves as pastors are nothing but people that open it just for business. We all can agree that there's a lot of money in the religion business. There's a lot of money when it comes to spirituality. People donate and donate and whether what happened to them came from God or not or just coincidence, they would always go back and give to the church because they truly believe with their faith that whatever success they achieved came from God. Understandably so. So you wouldn't blame them when they now take chunks of this money back to the church I said, thank you, gift. So this movie went ahead to address the issues of pastors, fake pastors. He couldn't even keep his own home together. It's a lot of bad things going on. And this movie did a good job at addressing it. You see, we want people to have faith in God and not in their pastors. We want people to pray to God and not to their pastors. Don't worship the ministries. Worship the Almighty. And as long as people get the point, then there will be less and less influence that the pastors are making on the people. It's them, the congregation, and their God. And that's what it's supposed to be. Number five is on Bridal. You need to see this. What is it? So... There's this Yinka guy that tweeted a video and uh, asked ladies who are interested in an open marriage to either call him or slide into his DM. You need to see people's responses on his comment section. <laughs> Those two guys are the craziest folks I've ever seen. I'm telling you. This guy. <laughs> see? Aww. Such a cutie doll. Mm. He's written all over him that he's a player. <laughs> Um, his option for an open marriage, what's your take on that? Well, it depends on the interest. If it's an arrangement and you're okay with my own means, go for it. I don't see any problem with that. If I have my way, that is the type of arrangement I will go for. 
You're kidding, right? My dear, this is the type of arrangement that will be very okay for me. What if along the line you start to notice some lovely qualities about this person and you start falling for him? <laughs> what kind of nonsense are you saying? <laughs> Fall last me. Well, my heart left the day to be disappeared. So don't bother. Never say never be so. So if I understand correctly, you're open to this whole open marriage arrangement? Yes. And you wouldn't get jealous if you saw me with another woman? No, I won't. Interesting. Why, if you don't mind me asking? See, the average woman would lose her mind if she knew her husband had a side check. Well, I am not your average woman. And my reason is personal. I don't want to talk about it. I think I like you, Bissola. The feeling is mutual. Now, why did we pick this? We picked this because there's a lot of problems that people encounter in their marriages these days. If it's not cheating, it's um, uh, mistrust. If it's not mistrust, it's financial problems. The biggest of all of them always seems like is infidelity. So, it's understandable if you see a partner that's worried that their partner might cheat on them. Now, this ends up leading to what the movie was presenting, which is an open marriage. Now, open marriage, if you don't know or if you don't understand, is just essentially where both couples agree to be seeing other people in the relationship. Although both parties are actually going into this with full understanding, the truth is that it messes with the marriage, the true sanctity of the marriage itself. When the marriage is no longer the priority, then individual priorities start popping up. And when those start popping up, the marriage starts getting shifted to the back burner. So this addresses something that's kind of looking like it's about to be a new trend. You know, people are still against it, but it's starting to happen gradually. You know, I've even heard there's areas in, you know, Abuja and Lagos where there's swing couples. I don't know much about this, but the truth is that if this is something that's, you know, creeping up, we need to find a way to shut it down. Because before anybody actually agrees or is okay with their partner seeing other people, that means you have somewhat disconnected from them. That disconnection will definitely turn around and affect the marriage. All right, so our number six nomination is Blind Date. Your ex, was he really here? Oh, mom, you kept it from me. You didn't even let one word slip. Not one word. I thought you loved me. I do, Kelvin, I love no, you. No, you don't love me. You don't. Love doesn't hurt this much. Love will not do the things you did to me. Especially love will not cheat. I mean, I swear. You will not cheat. I swear I, I did not cheat. I would never, I would never do that to you. I swear, I would have been I would advise you stay where you are and just be by yourself. I will not stop. I will not stop. Why are you acting like a child? Really? I'm acting like a child? She just ran off. You didn't even wait to listen to my own side of the story. You, you ran off and now I'm acting like a child? Don't you dare play the victim here. I begged you day and night. 
pleaded with you to listen to my own side of my own story. But you pushed me away. Only for me to find you. At least I did not do anything with Tony. I'm sorry, whatever happened was never meant to happen. I can't even explain what. I, I, I'm sorry. I miss you, my love. I miss you. Blind date, as you guys can see, addresses one big problem that happens in many relationships. The lack of communication. You see, if there's communication, almost all the problems that exist in marriages would be able to be curtailed. Communication opens the doors for anybody, every couple to understand each other. It makes room for transparency. It makes room for people to be able to understand what's going on in their relationship. So if anything goes sideways, they are already ready for it. As you guys can see in this, there's a lot of miscommunication that led to the situation where the lady and the husband to be were not able to continue based on mistrust mistrust that only came about from miscommunication our seventh nomination is perfect love i want you to transform slime into a husband material for my daughter, Chantel. I want this like a kind of extra Christmas bonus when she comes back from the US. Why are you being over dramatic? Why don't you save your performance for a theater? At least there you get a standing ovation. Not here. This is my duty post. Now, please, get out. Me, get out. From my own in-laws out. Why are you still here? You have made your point. So please, madam, get out. Ruby, I won't get out. I won't get out today. I won't get out tomorrow. I won't get out forever. You know why? Because I'm here to keep an eye on my brother. From folks like you. From, from women with, with, with juju pants like you. Oh, you think I don't know if kissed him? Fine. You've kissed him. You forced him into your legs. You know what? Carry that one and go. Ruby, carry that one and go. What? How could you? How could you do this to me? Ruby, I trusted you. I entrusted my future son-in-law into your hands to groom him for my chantel. And what did you do? When I turned my back, you cornered him for yourself. Have I not been a good boss to you? Have I not treated you right? Trust is truly a double-headed sword. I'm sorry, sir. I tell you, I have this thing about trust. As if trust is like a broken mirror. When it's broken, you can fix it. However, you stick to the crack of that mirror. So, perfect love, as you guys can see, addresses something that we are hoping that our younger generation will stop. This whole thing about hookups, uh, dating married men, things like that. You know, sometimes it looks like the economy or the economic situation, you know, is forcing people to lean towards that direction but the truth is that if you have a conscience you definitely would be wary of doing certain things as you guys can see in the movie we are hopeful for a society where if there's no employment people would actually look for things that they could do business-wise to support themselves without having to consider sleeping around as an option you know, and we're hoping that this would come because with time, you know, there's all these new things and new uh, technological advances that are coming out, you know, that are letting people get into other things that, you know, were not around years back. 
things like the social media, any money from YouTube, any money from skit making, any money, these kind of things are things that people could actually engage in when you cannot actually get a job. And these with time would definitely start paying. Look, there are so many people in the industry that are making an honest living from making skits on a daily. This opportunity was not around in the yesteryears, but it is here now. So what are we doing about it? Why would you choose to engage in things that are bad instead of putting yourself on the roadmap to bigger and bigger things through whatever new technology that is out there? Our number eight nomination is within us. Let's watch. I don't have a job. I think I'm doing better. Of course you are. What are you How saying? How many people do you see here? Just one job. This place is almost empty now. What are you saying? This place is almost empty. Yeah, you only still bedtime. Guy, yeah, who would that be? Um, uh, I'm supposed to know. You should know one of your customers. You don't know she's supposed to keep tabs on your customers. Yeah, she comes here once in a while to chill. That's all I know about her. OMG. What is that mean? Guy, I'll be right back. What's that? Guy, I said I'll be right back. Trust me, man. Chill. chill. I said chill. Ah. Mm. Beautiful girls like you shouldn't be left alone. Can I keep you company? I don't mind the company of a fine man. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dean. I was calling you today. Why didn't you pick my call? Hey, I'm so sorry, honestly. Uh, you know how Mario's bar can be at now, huh? I was there and I didn't know the phone was ringing. You know it can be noisy. Hmm? Fine. Man, it's good. Good healing. Uh-uh. Ah, -uh. uh, sexual healing. Sexual healing something. Are you cute? What's going on? And I saw the this Disgusting messages she sent to you. Tell me something, Austin. What did I ever do to deserve this? Tell me. All I have ever done is try my best to be a good wife. I have loved you and I've respected you and I've done everything in me. This, this is what I get to return. So the reason why we picked this is because there's all these talks, you know, when you talk to a lot of men, they are worried of their wife being the breadwinner. Why? Because they feel that being a breadwinner comes with the consequences of disrespect and whatnot. The truth is that it shouldn't. You know, if there are people that are like that in terms of ladies, then I'm sure that it is not a lie. But the ones there are enough to scare men about this problem so what we hope that this movie taught the viewers is that a woman being a breadwinner is not a bad thing another thing we can get from here is that no matter who the breadwinner is it's always good to respect your marriage so respect your marriage because you know even if you're the breadwinner today tomorrow it might flip and when you are in a relationship with somebody that you have not been treating right, when they now become opportuned to be the breadwinner, they will definitely remember all the bad things that you've done to them. So we hope that this movie teaches both our men to focus on building the family instead of tearing it down. Our number nine nomination is Best Man Wins. I miss you. Please marry me, baby. Fred. That's my love. Three years. You walked out of my life and you returned with a ring. Is that supposed to make everything all right? Baby. Hey. 
I'm in a relationship. With that boy? Excuse you? Babe, I'm back. That boy looks like he's preparing for Wayek. He's waiting for a jam results, baby. I'm back. The owner is back. I messed up, baby. I'm, I'm human. But I'm back, baby. I'm back for you. I'm back for us. I'm back forever. I'm feeling cold. I'm feeling cold? Yes. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. You have to turn off the AC. Not really. Not really? Yeah. You're sad. Red! Clara! Hi! Hey! Hi! How are you doing? How am I doing? Oh, yeah. Uh, Jessica, Jesse, hey. Um, this is my friend Clara. My friend Clara. My friend Clara, this is Jessica. Clara, hi. Yeah. Well, you okay? Okay. Hey, uh, babe, why is she upset? Who is she? That's a change in soft paper. That's a change in soft paper. I don't. When you see that young guy, he loves and respects me. The right man will cheat or deny me. Baby, that was then. That's not me now. Wait, marry me, baby. This is real life. This is me. Babe, come on now. Have a nice day. Babe, that guy has a curfew now. He has to go home before 9 a.m., 9 p.m. Yes. So this is a little tricky because, you know, I always recommend that before people get married, they should date. Now, this dating is important on so many levels. As much as it's hard to differentiate dating from intimacy, if it's possible, it's a good thing. Now, the reason why it's good to date somebody is that you really get to know them and understand if it's something that, you know, whatever flaws that you see, if it's something that you can live with. The good things are definitely going to be the good things. But there's something that I always say, that in a relationship, you really know when somebody loves you when times are hard when the going is good when everything is beautiful you know the money is flowing in people tend to be happy and act right however you wouldn't tell from that stage whether the person really loves you for you or if they love you for what you can offer now, there's usually this saying that men are loved for what they would offer and women are loved for who they are. If this is true, then definitely ladies need to step up because it's not fair that a man would love you for who you are, take you from nobody and make you their own. But if the roles were flipped, women wouldn't do the same thing but really besides this side point the message that this gets across is that if you've been in a relationship and you were not treated right going into marriage with the person would not fix the problem so as you can see in that the lady knew what was wrong with their relationship when it happened so when the man came back years later looking to now marry her she was able to separate what he did then from what he could possibly do the fact is that there's no separation if he's a cheat when you are dating he would be a cheat when you're married Cheating is something of the conscience. So if the conscience allows it for them, then the marriage or no marriage wouldn't really have an impact on it. So guys, we felt like this one definitely had a lesson to learn. The cast in that movie definitely did a good job in presenting the difference between being in a relationship and you know, married somebody that you were in a relationship with. Our number 10 and last nomination 
for this month is love and religion. Fred and I love each other and we want to spend the rest of our lives together. Are you aware that this boy is the son of a native doctor? No, that doesn't make him less human. Oh, really? So, uh, Fred, the best you could do is lure my daughter to live with you before marriage. Is that the best way to teach her what love is? Mommy, it was my decision to come live with him. Mommy, stop this. You're being dramatic. I'm being dramatic. I am being dramatic. This marriage will not work. Mommy, it will work. I and Fred love each other. We're going to get married. I will not step back and see my son and the wife. You know, suffering suffer, suffer in this condition, it cannot happen. I will be there in the city. And I will make sure that I must see to the case. Uh, yes, come here, come here. Uh, 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 how's she doing? Uh, she's still sleeping. Go ahead, tell her that I'm okay. I brought some herbal medicine for her to take, and she is going to start taking it now. Uh, Papa, the doctors already gave her medicine, and she's getting better. You can go and call your wife for me. What are you talking here, doctor, doctor? What are you talking about? Go and call your wife for me. Hello? Okay, sir. Hello? 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 So you are here to complete the work started in your place. Oya? Oya wa? Oya wa? Equin su. Devil, I am here to counter your powers. I'm here to counter you by fire, by thunder. I will counter you by fire, by thunder. You will not have that power over my daughter. I will free my daughter in Jesus' name. You can't let me destroy my daughter. It will not work. I'm here to match you. You don't know. Okay? Uh -huh. Oh, Fred. So because you heard that I'm coming here, you went and called your father. Okay? So that two of you come and destroy my daughter. Fire, fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire will consume two of you. I cannot be equally yoked and unbeliever. I can't eat in the same temple with a fetish man. Because mommy, man. mommy, please stop. Stop this now, eh? No, no, just allow her to talk. Allow her. I've been hearing her. You know, talking, putting words in how to be a guy. Drink. It's the woman. I don't care whatever you choose to watch. But let me warn you for the last time. This should be the last time you insult me. Or that might be. What will you do? What will you do? you know who you're pointing your finger at? Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. I am the apple of the Lord's eyes. I cannot be unequally yoked with a man in this Bible. Even in the English and the Hebrew, what I'm saying is that that man must give his life to Christ. And there's a difference between disrespecting and saying the truth. I am saying the truth according to what my Bible is saying. And I will continue to say it until I cast them out of this house or they repent. One of them must happen. They will be cast out or they repent. Oh, 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 please, we need to hear ah, 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 the devil. Like, I hear the voice of the devil speaking. I will not please. walk in my presence. I cast and rebuke in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. Love and religion, as you guys can see, hinders on something that's very big. There's religion, but before religion, there was tradition. Now, what has happened is religious beliefs have been shifting and shifting and making traditional beliefs look like they're occultic. But the truth is that they're not. Our forefathers, before religion, they were doing well. They all believed in somebody, a supreme being, somewhere, maybe a lot of supreme beings. But the bottom line of both religion or traditional is being able to understand and do good. At the end of the day, religion teaches us to love our neighbors the way we love ourselves. Traditionalists have the same opinion. Treat people the way you want to be treated. 
So this movie was able to show us the two sides. You know, the lady definitely was trying to hold on to her religion while the man was more open. Although he was a traditionalist, he was more open to understanding that religious people have this weird way of thinking. But at the end of the day, they came together. They came together not just because of their, you know, their kids, the son and the daughter that were in the marriage. They came together because they were able to have a dialogue and understand each other's points. See, that's the thing about communication in relationships. If you're able to communicate well, most of the problems that we have in relationships would not exist. Before this dialogue that they had, the lady was on her own wing, shouting and, you know, binding and casting without even paying attention. The man was on his own side, you know, you know doing everything necessary because he was there for a reason to make sure that the young kids are able to conceive. So we love how at the end they brought religion and tradition together to understand each other and to, you know, coexist in good faith. All right, so these are our 10 nominees for the month of January 2024. We understand that there are a lot of movies that were out in January. And again, we could not pick every single movie. There's a lot of other movies that had great messages that they thought. But of course, we only had to pick 10. So... Our next step is to vote. We wish that every person that watches this video will get to vote out of this 10 which one they believe delivered the best message. The names of all the movies are there, so you are able to go and watch anyone that you have not watched. Let us hear your opinion.
Voting has been opened up to the public. In essence, what we are hoping is that people that will go and watch any of the movies that they've not watched and vote on which movie that you guys think made the best positive impact for our January 2024 McNady Studios Award. So thank you for watching and we look forward to your votes as you guys decide who would be the winner of our January award. Now keep in mind we will be doing this every month of the year. Every month we're going to pick 10 movies that we felt had the best impact and we let our viewers decide which movie made the best positive impact. Again, this is CJ from McNady Studios. Thank you guys for watching and if you have not subscribed, please subscribe, follow and be part of our growing positive impact viewers.